Hey guys, Chastity and Greg here, back on camera with another breakdown of Star Trek Discovery, this time with <laughs> Season 2, Episode 11, Perpetual Infinity. Now, again, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, get out of here, go watch it, and then come on back. All right, first off, we weren't on camera last week because of GDC, but now we got our studio back, we're here. and we're here, we're and here. we'll tell you what we thought I about didn't... Episode 10 really quick. Sure, let's do it, because I didn't, uh, I, I find it funny, the one episode, oh, we missed uh, two, I think. I did yeah. VO for another one mm -hmm. way, way back. Um, but one thing, first of all, we're going to be here for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we're going to be here every week. Uh, we didn't know people were going to get so mad about it. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I found it funny that the one episode that we didn't, we, both of us weren't on camera mm -hmm. for, uh, was the one that I, yes, I disliked that episode. I'm that sorry. That was your <laughs> least favorite episode of the season. Yes, uh, yes I, it was. Yeah. I, I just think it was really hard to follow up episode 9 because episode 9 was so strong. The mm -hmm. Arium episode was just a favorite of yeah. ours. Um, and then episode 10 was just kind of by the numbers, by the books, with a semi-predictable reveal? I didn't hate the reveal yeah. at all. Um, I wish there was more time okay. for that reveal mm -hmm. <laughs> to play out. No. Yeah, so we didn't call this at all. I had no idea that it was going to be Michael's mom. So I guess, yeah, it, it's not it's fine. that predictable. That's, no, that's yeah. still a good reveal. Yeah. It's still cool to have it be Michael's mom. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. With that said, the only thing I really, it wasn't even that that I didn't like. It was just mm -hmm. the suspect dialogue throughout that entire episode. You too, puppy. Did you just call me puppy? All right, well, this episode, episode 11, mm -hmm. I liked a bit more. I thought it was an improvement on episode 10. Yes. And yeah, I thought it was intense. The the final part of the episode was very climactic. Me too. Yeah. I, I thought that was great. Yeah. Uh, the last part of the episode, I'm thinking, okay, where are they going to go from here? Right. I can see, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later, where they might go when it comes to time travel. <laughs> Now this episode kicks off with a flashback to the Doctari Alpha research outpost where Michael and her family were staying, moments before the Klingons attack. So we finally see what happens to Michael and her parents when Michael's in that closet. Mm -hmm. so. we, we see that they have the time crystal, the mm -hmm. giant ass time crystal. They're, <laughs> they actually, yeah, they're about right to make here. their first jump, mm -hmm. they're getting ready, then all of a sudden Michael's looking through a telescope again yep. and sees something landing. It's confirmed that Burnham's mom, Gabrielle, is the Red Angel. So she used tachyon radiation to blast Michael back to life. Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. I'll I don't know that. how that works. That's that's fine. It's fine. Future tech. Yeah. The big thing out of this is they downloaded the Angel's mission log, so now we get all the flashbacks and everything revealed for why the Angel did what she did early on in the season. How many? All 841 of them. Burnham watches her mom's mission logs, and we find out that the first jump was an attempt to jump back an hour before the Klingon attack. It fails. <laughs> So no matter how many times the angel jumps through time, she always gets snapped right back to yep. her anchor point 950 years away. That sucks. It's kind of like some horrible quantum leap thing. Yeah. I don't know. Now, Michael's mom is played by the great Sonia Song from The Wire. Now, in some kind of like Groundhog's Day fashion, I envision that uh, Burnham's mom just kept trying to fix everything over and over and failing over and over again. She can't stop control. Yeah, she did a really great job. Just She's only in this like one and a half episodes or one and a quarter episodes so far, but mm -hmm. just the amount of emotion that shows in her performance taking a toll on her because she's just seen everything. Mm -hmm. And she's seen her daughter die over and over and over again. She's seen the world die over and over and over again. They, existence disappear. She only had so much time on screen yeah. and she had to show so much emotion for what's going on and you have to feel for her and this worked. Really, really well done. Also in the mission logs, Dr. Burnham mentions that she moved people to Terralysium to prove time is fluid and the future can be changed. Now let's talk about Leland. L Leland of Borg, or whatever Leland they're gonna call Leland was compromised. He's been compromised by control. Struggle is pointless. Resistance is futile. Okay, so we're going into some like now Matrix style tag Borg yes. stuff. Just like that, that zoom in and a bunch of like weird little nanites or something was coming in and like mm -hmm. just filling up his veins and like the side of his face was turning black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Very Matrix. So with that said, he's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, he walks back out there and he tells Ash and Giorgio that he wants the data from the sphere. 
no one no one's like hmm that's not yeah that's not that's strange weird. at all that's mm -mm. super weird but i think giorgio is a little suspect as soon as they have that conversation because he's just got this newfound confidence and newfound <laughs> sass towards her and just she's just like that's this is weird like that's you're being very bold it's like, not what's that saru that? confidence yeah with the like, ganglia uh, going -uh. something's off about him so she's suspicious from the get-go after that conversation the disco crew figures out that they need to send dr burnham back to her anchor point or the universe will rip the containment field apart and pull dr burnham Burnham to the future. Also, Dr. Burnham put the sphere in Disco's path, hoping they would keep the data safe and stop control. So we always thought that the signals and the Red Angel were connected, but mm -hmm. apparently Dr. Burnham never heard of him. Yeah. Has no idea. Can I bring up the Iconians again, or should I shut up now? That's that? fine. I, I should just bury it in the backyard and Iconians throw them in there, because I don't think they're going to do it. But I, hey, they're still leaving that smidgen of hope yeah, that uh, the Iconians are going to pop up. The Discovery crew agrees to delete the Sphere archive. The data is partitioning itself. It's building a firewall with encryptions from languages that haven't existed in thousands of centuries. Also, we finally find out why Spock was connected to the Red Angel. It's because Dr. Burnham figures out that she can communicate with him. Yes, his, uh, what, his Vulcan logic and his human emotions are the perfect uh, thing for apparently he can understand what's going on with uh, the Red Angel, at least. And his dyslexia is the reason why he can process these visions of the future. How do you feel about that? At the end of the day, you just wanted to get Spock on the show. So sure, this is how you're gonna use him. You wanna put Spock on this Spock season. Spock needs to be important. He's yes. here, he's, he's important. Here. There it is, this is the reason. All right, let's move on and not talk about it ever again. Got it. Dr. Burnham doesn't want to see Michael because she's had the same conversations with her a gazillion times, only to watch her die a gazillion times. The crew sets a plan to send the suit and the sphere data flying so far into the future that it can do them no harm, and Control can't find it. They're going to program a destination beyond Dr. Burnham's anchor point and let the wormhole take it forever. And this is where we get our title. Perpetual Infinity. Control will never get the data in order to evolve. So of course everything comes full circle and they need the equivalent of a supernova in order mm -hmm. to sever Dr. Burnham from her space time. And this is where dark matter gets involved. They're going to use the dark matter particles to lock on Dr. Burnham and beam her to their space time. I like science. So Leland Control, whatever you want to call him, pushes Giorgio a little harder to get that data from the sphere. Because mm -hmm. uh, Ash, she couldn't do it at yeah. the time. And now he's going to have her just beam down there and drop the thing off. Yeah. And she goes with it. Yeah, she, she does go with it for now. And then she stops it and asks Ash to go check it out. Mm -hmm. And Ash gets shivved. Poor Ash, he always takes one for the team. And uh, this time, man, you just gotta have that phaser ready, dude. He yeah. could've just shot off twice before he ran at him. Even though, for me, if it were me, I just would've screamed and, <laughs> and shot it in the air. At yeah. the same time, I feel bad for Ash. <laughs> every year he's i feel like every season he's just gonna have something like this happen but yeah. he'll somehow survive and then a very emotional moment burnham's mom reveals that she's always watched over her she mm -hmm. knows every beat her of, graduation of her life. yeah her first time on the i think it was a shenzo yeah uh anything she's probably been there any little flashbacks the one with also her and spock as little kids yeah she didn't she's miss a there. moment so then Control Leland takes matters into its own hands mm -hmm. and beams down. beams down, attacks the outpost, destroys the time crystal. When that happened, I was like, oh, okay, well, there's that. Hopefully that, that means I guess they're not going to go back anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know yet, though. Right. You can write anything in there and change this. But yeah. as of right now, it means that the Red Angel can't go back and change anything anymore. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up to Discovery. Yep, and he resumes downloading the information from the sphere. Uh -huh. The crew is forced to send the Angel and Dr. Burnham back into the time stream. You can see this coming from a mile away. You know she couldn't stay. Like, uh -huh. Burnham wants her to stay, but you know she can't stay right now. Like, maybe... We'll see her probably maybe again in the season in a finale. Episodes, yeah. <laughs> but definitely not now. Yeah. And then, Leland Control escapes on the NCIA-93. He masked a warp signature so they can't pursue him, and Ash manages to get out in an escape pod. Godspeed speed to the rest of that NCIA 93 crew because uh, <laughs> I they're all dead he's dead that's that's the end of that because they didn't even show another crew member on that ship given any <laughs> character that you see so you know that oh no that control has probably turned off life support and is just trucking through space right now yeah also Spock gives some words of wisdom to Michael Burnham what happened before no longer exists. What will happen next has not yet been written. We have only now. 
And now they're on their own in the fight to stop control. Or so we think. At the front of the episode, we see Disco's version of the Klingon Bird of Prey ship. Designed by John Dickinson and Sam Mishlap, the H.R. Giger-inspired look of the Birds of Prey has popped up a few times last season, including in the season finale, Will You Take My Hand? With an episode titled Perpetual Infinity, we knew we should expect some Einstein and Newton name drops. Saru explains that holding Dr. Burnham is an example of Newton's third law of motion. Oh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Sorry, it's just my second favorite law of physics. This means that in every interaction, there is a pair of forces acting on the two interacting objects. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. A Newtonian truism, which you've obviously neglected. As for Einstein, in one of Dr. Burnham's logs, she says that Einstein couldn't have been more right. Time's motion depends on the observer, on the action. Einstein showed us that time and space are relative. They are not fixed entities and are changeable. Essentially, space and time are in the eye of the beholder. Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein have popped up many times in Trek in some form, including the time in 2369 when Data created a holodeck version of Newton, Einstein, and Stephen Hawking to watch them play a game of poker. When Dr. Burnham meets Pike, she tells him he'll soon return to the Enterprise and alludes to his doomed future. Soon you'll return to your ship. I could say more about your future, but you won't like it. And if you've seen the original series, you know what she means. You want to go there? Deleting the Sphere Archive is tantamount to burning the Library of Alexandria or the Bibliotheca Corviniana. The Great Library of Alexandria in Egypt was one of the largest and most significant libraries of the ancient world. Alexandria came to be regarded as the capital of knowledge and learning in part because of the Great Library. As for the Bibliotheca Corsiniana, it's one of Rome's historic libraries containing books dating back from 1730. As we mentioned earlier, Discovery uses dark matter to help Dr. Burnham. Now this is the dark matter that the crew encountered on an asteroid while investigating investigating the red burst signals in interstellar space. Now there are references to dark matter in various Trek series, including the time in 2371 where Chakotay and Tuvok encountered a dark matter nebula while on board a shuttle in the episode Cathexis. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 4. And of course we get another Hamlet quote from Spock. The time was out of joint. Oh cursed spite that I was born to set it right. Hamlet. Hell yeah. Now with that, here's a clip of Leonard Nimoy reciting Hamlet in Yiddish. Sein or nicht sein, ort was ist die Frage? Es ist edle von der Miet vertrocknen Stil des Schleidersteinen Pfeil von Boys und Mazel, oder es ist bewaffen in Ankegen Jam von Leid und Endigen den Kampf. Bonus content! Yes! Hooray! <laughs> so what do you think of this episode? Uh, uh, okay, last week's episode <laughs> shook me a little, so... I'm, and I'm, where are we going? So where are we going? So looking ahead, what is coming? <laughs> if they tweak the timeline, I, I feel like the, the final shot is going to be Captain, and it's just Burnham, engage, or anything, and then kicks off. They could totally do that. Ready for season three. Um, we'll see. I just, I don't know. Captain uh, Pike for season three! Please. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to get those last few breakdowns of Star Trek Discovery Season 2 coming your way. And we will see you all back here next week. Goodbye. Beep. 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 <laughs> oh, I'm so <laughs> sad.